Hey everyone, my name is Chelsea. Welcome to Little Mountain Ranch. Welcome to my kitchen. Early this morning, we are going to make some breakfast together. Then we are going to head out and do the last harvest on the garden. And then I'm going to share with you one of our favorite dinner recipes. So what we're gonna make this morning is cherry almond baked oatmeal. I had a lot of requests for this when I mentioned it when I did my Costco haul the other day. So I thought I would make that up for breakfast this morning. We're going to start with six cups of old fashioned oats. If you have quick oats, that's fine too. It just makes it a little bit more dense. We're going to add one cup of all purpose flour. Two teaspoons of baking powder. A teaspoon of salt. one cup of brown sugar. Once the sun comes up, we are going to head outside and do the last harvest on the garden. We have some kale to harvest out there, maybe a few beets in the ground. And I have a row of carrots that I planted really late in the summer. And so they're just really tiny. So I want to go and get those pulled out. I'll probably leave some to overwinter in the garden, but we'll pull some of those out as well. I'm going to add a cup of chocolate chips. And this recipe has tons of different variations that I love to do. Almond peach is a really good one. Walnut raspberry is a really good one. And you can substitute out the brown sugar for white sugar, maple syrup, or honey if you like. And the white flour for whole wheat flour if you're looking to make a little bit more of a healthy version. This particular one is my kid's favorite. We'll give all of our dry ingredients a mix. I actually have to run out to the chicken coop and grab a couple of eggs because I don't have any eggs in my egg basket. The sun's just about up over the mountain. We have had the most gorgeous autumn this year it's been so warm actually similar to last year last year was really warm as well the sun's just about to come up let's go see what we can find for eggs my ladies have slowed down their production which is really normal this time of year they'll slow down quite a bit and then starting in around february they'll start laying again these are our little chicks that we hatched out and we put them in the chicken coop and they keep breaking out Aren't they cute? This is the pen that they grew up in, so they keep coming over here. Got a couple eggs. We've been getting ready for winter here on the farm, and one of the things that we have been trying to do is to get through all of our sheds, the shop over here, the barn and all of that, and get everything organized. You can see outside of the shop right there, that is the last of the organization that had to be dealt with in the shop. So those things just need to be, some need to be hauled away to the dump and then the rest just organized. Several of you have noticed that we have a school bus <laughs> you can see down there. And Dan actually got that for free a couple years ago and we use it for uh, storage, similar to how you would use a sea can. It's fantastic because we can actually drive it down to wherever we need it to be <laughs> loaded up and then park it back up out of sight it's fantastic okay let's get this baked oatmeal into the oven so you can mix your wet and dry ingredients separately if you like but as you know i rarely ever do that this recipe does call for four eggs but since we only have three we're going to use three instead thankfully though they are nice big eggs beautiful bright yellow eggs four cups of milk, a quarter cup of melted butter, one cup of slivered almonds. So before we add the cherries, we're going to get this all mixed up just so that the cherries don't kind of fall apart when we mix them in and then we'll just fold them in gently. And we are going to add a cup 
or so of cherries. And you know what I think I'm gonna do is put the cherries into the bottom of this rather than mixing them in. You can absolutely mix them in if you like. But I'm going to add, I think this whole entire thing actually, why not? And then we are going to dump in our oatmeal mixture. And then we are going to bake this at 350. In my case, I'm going to do it 325 because I just got a new oven and it bakes really hot. And we are going to bake it for around 40 minutes until it's golden brown on top. I am going to make myself a cup of tea and I'll be back with you again to show you the finished product. All right, friends. So when I came back in the house, my kids had already gotten into <laughs> the baked oatmeal, so I can't show you it in a tray, but this is what it looks like. It's delicious. So we just add a little bit of milk to it and some of them eat it with milk, some of them don't, but I prefer to have it with milk, even a little bit of whipping cream or even some ice cream is really, really good. And it is delicious and super filling. So now we're gonna head out to the garden and get all of the kale harvested, bring it up to the house and get that processed for most likely the freeze dryer. I might end up freezing some of it, but I think most of it will go into the freeze dryer. So I'm pretty sure this is the final harvest in the garden. So as you can see, we have a lot of the prep work done on our beds here. There is a good six inches of compost over these ones and then the garlic is down where you can see the leaves and under, underneath that we also have some compost as well. So we'll pull off all of the kale here. You can harvest kale right until there's snow on the ground and it's freezing. But I know that I will end up just forgetting that it's down here if I don't just get it all picked now. One of my neighbors phoned me and told me that they have a massive amount of turnips and asked if I wanted any. So last year they planted turnips. They're a big cattle operation in some of their fields to help to add some extra nutrients to the fields and this year they had tons come up and he said there's some that are the size of volleyballs over there and why that's a good thing for me is because this was one year that I did not plant turnips first year I think in all my gardening years that I did not plant turnips so I'm going to go over there and pick a bunch of them and just put them in my root cellar and even whatever we don't eat we can give to the pigs and they'll last in the root cellar for months and months and months. I'm going to leave these here. They could make it through the winter. They don't always make it through the winter up here, but sometimes they do and they'll send up flowers and then those flowers will form seeds, seed pods. So we'll see if they make it, they make it. If they don't, that's all, all right too. This is where I planted my Egyptian walking onions and I can see my chickens have been in here scratching things up. I'll put a piece of chicken wire over top of this so they don't dig them out and actually eat them. That would be very frustrating. Okay, one more big clump. Oh, these ones are beautiful. Look at how gorgeous that kale plant is. My goodness. Wow. This one is winter boar. Very, very hardy kale. And then this one up here is scarlet. It's one of my favorites. So beautiful. We've had some good frost, so this should be nice and sweet. That's a nice mound. I still have some celery here. 
that we have cut off and is growing new little baby celeries. <laughs> Pretty hardy, this stuff. So I guess I can come through and cut all these light leaves off as well and get those freeze dried for winter soups. Um, excuse me, sir. Out, 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 out. Okay, let's do a quick peek on our onions. We're about five days after the last time we were out here, I think. Definitely doing well. Let's see. Still a bit more moisture in there than I want. I guess we'll just push this out a little bit longer and see if we can't get these fully cured out here. I'm so happy this year because getting all of this garden prep done in the fall is something that I always aim to do, but rarely ever succeed. So to be able to have garden beds actually ready for spring planting in the fall is pretty awesome. So the plan with these is to cover them up with as, min as much leaf mulch as we can rake up from around the main house because we have lots of big trees there that are dropping all their leaves because covered soil is happy soil. So it does have the mulch or the um, compost manure on top, but even on top of that, I'd like to have another layer as well. Let's get this kale up to the house and get it processed. Everything looks so much smaller outside. And then when you bring it in the house, it's a lot. <laughs> we have like a mountain of kale here. So this is gonna be super easy to process though, because all I'm going to do is chop this up into sections. I probably will remove some of the larger stalks, but because I'm going to be freeze drying this and then I'm going to be running it through my food processor and chopping it up into really fine little pieces because I'm wanting to make a green powder, um, these stalks can be chopped up just as well as the leaves can. I'm gonna blanch them first or anything like that. When they come out of the freeze dryer, I am going to run them through my food processor and make a fine powder out of them. And then I'll be adding that into soups and stews and smoothies in the winter time. Once we get all of this processed, it seems like a lot. It is a lot, <laughs> but it is going to shrink down into a very small amount. I'm sure this will be less than half a gallon once it's all said and done, but it's gonna be highly concentrated. So I'll just be able to add a tablespoon into a soup or a stew or a, um, or a smoothie and get actually a lot of nutrients in it. And kale, as you know, is really high in all kinds of good vitamins and minerals and nutrients. So um, what I could do is cut off the stalk here, but that's not really necessary in this case because I'm planning on um, grinding it up to be a really fine powder. So why have all those extra nutrients that are in that stock go to waste? If you are going to be cutting this up and steaming it or throwing it right in a soup when it's fresh like this, I would recommend cutting the stock off because it takes a lot longer to cook than the leaves do, but also it isn't um, that delicious. <laughs> so it's kind of, it's kind of uh, fibrous but because of what I'm wanting to turn all of this into at this point, I'm not gonna worry about that. So this will make super short work of this pile. So I am going to take all of this kale and soak it in some water for a little bit just in case there are any little bugs. There shouldn't be bugs in it this time of year, but just in case, because um, we don't want to freeze dry bugs. <laughs> so I've already made a pretty good dent in this pile. So I'm wondering if it would take up, well, I know it would take up less room in my freeze dryer if I actually just pureed all this kale now and freeze dried the pureed kale and then ran that through the food processor when I was finished to make the powder. That makes way more sense, doesn't it? <laughs> way more sense. So change of plans. We're gonna do that. I just, so I'll have to add a little bit of water to it in order to make it actually be able to blend, um, to blend up. But let's just try doing this with, I'm not gonna use my food processor. I'm actually gonna use my Vitamix. Pre-freezing in this case, because I'm adding the water, the extra water might be a good idea, although I'm not going to, at least not with this first batch. 
Once we're finished getting this all pureed, I will show you how much we ended up with as far as turning all of this into puree, how many trays we ended up with for the freeze dryer. And then we're going to make glory bowls, which is one of our family's absolutely favorite dinners. Uh, so we'll be back with you again in a little bit. We went to town for a couple of hours this afternoon. We are now back and I'm getting ready to put this delicious meal. It's called glory bowls together for dinner. And this recipe is from, I think it's called Whitewater, Whitewater Restaurant or Whitewater Cafe or something like that. But I will put a link to the recipe down in the show notes below. And the recipe that I'm gonna to share today will serve eight. We have eight cups of brown rice already cooked over on the stove. I have a bunch of carrots here along with a bunch of beautiful beets. Look at how gorgeous that is. So we are going to grate these up and set them aside in some bowls. And once we have that done, we are going to fry up some tofu. I have four packages of tofu here and I'll show you how we're going to fry those up in just a second. First though, let's get our beets and our carrots grated up here. this big monstrous one down a little bit. Grated carrot, a little bit more than two cups. Set that aside. We'll do our beets. Okay, now we are going to chop up our tofu. For this recipe, you want extra firm tofu. And you could use chicken breast for this if you like. We always have it with tofu. It's the only recipe that we actually use with tofu, but all my kids really enjoy it. You have to take my word for it. I know once you see all these ingredients together, you may wonder how they could taste so good, but this really is one of our family's favorite recipes. All of us enjoy it, even my pickier kids. Something very satisfying about cutting tough tofu. Just gonna get my cast iron fry pan heating up with a little bit of olive oil back here. You can cut this into whatever size pieces you like, but we like it like this. Now we are going to roast up around a cup and a little bit more of almonds. We want to crisp up our tofu so it's a little bit brown and crispy on the outside of it. And now we are going to make our dressing in our not very clean blender. <laughs> One sec. We want half a cup of nutritional yeast, flakes, a third cup of water, third cup of tamari or soy sauce. In this case, I am using savory liquid seasoning, Bragg's, a third a cup of apple cider vinegar, two beautiful cloves of garlic crushed. The dressing is the best part of this recipe. I'm so excited, Dan's outside building the platform for the bunkie, the little cabin that we're building. So excited about it. Okay, we need two tablespoons of tahini. Tahini is sesame butter for those that aren't familiar with it. And it is very bad for separating and having all the oils come up to the top. Okay, two good sized tablespoons of tahini. And we're going to add a cup and a half of oil to this, but we're gonna get our blender going and then just drizzle our olive oil in so it emulsifies nicely. 
You can use any kind of vegetable oil for this, but we've always used olive oil. If you're not used to the strong flavor of extra virgin olive oil, then I would recommend using like an avocado oil or an organic canola oil or something like that. We have our roasted almonds here, so we're just gonna let those cool off over here because we are gonna give those a chop. Oh, I forgot to tell you, <laughs> we ended up with eight trays of the pureed um, kale, and I still have the pile of kale that you can see over here that I want to process. I decided not to get this processed because it's gonna lose some of its nutritional value as it's sitting out while the freeze dryer runs through um, and the ones that are in the freezer run through. So I'm just gonna actually leave these to sit here. And then once that batch is done in the freeze dryer tomorrow, I'll pull it out, mix up the rest of these because this will probably be another four trays worth and fill those trays up, pop those in the freezer, take the ones from the freezer and put them in the freeze dryer. So we should end up with 12 trays, probably all together, which is awesome. So good, <laughs> so good. Okay, now we gotta clean off our cutting board here and get our almonds coarsely chopped. Nicely browned tofu over there. Roasted almonds smell so good. To want some spinach leaves, or in this case, this is a mixed green, so it's pretty heavy on the spinach. And then I'm gonna show you how we put this all together. We have our brown rice here. I've done it with white rice before too, but it really does taste better with brown rice in my opinion. It's of our greens. Going to add some brown rice on top of that. Some beets, some carrots, a little bit of tofu, and some almonds on top. A little extra because I like lots of almonds. And then we pour a little bit of our dressing on top of that. And my friends, this is amazing. I don't know what it is about this particular combination, but like I said, even my kids who are super picky love this. Some of them don't love the dressing. Oh, one sec. I wish the colors of this showed up. Look at how beautiful that is. So good and so good for you too. Mm -mm -mm. Oh my goodness. This has to be one of my favorite things to eat. My very favorite thing is a beef tenderloin. <laughs> it's my very favorite, but this is definitely a close second. Mm. Do yourself a favor, my friends, and give Glory Bowls a try. They're so delicious. And I wanted to give you a quick update on the muffins. They're just about gone over there in the canister. I forgot to tell you on the last video that my kids thought they were absolutely incredible. Some of the best pumpkin muffins they ever had. So that is definitely a recipe that I am going to be keeping. So good. All right, my friends, that is it for today's video. I hope that you enjoyed it and I look forward to seeing you next time. Bye.